Welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us. Now, this particular field that we're standing by is a long ways from side dressing, but much of the corn across the country is at the right stage to add some additional nutrients to push for higher yields. We'll talk about side dressing corn and some considerations you may have on your farm. We'll also talk about increasing protein in wheat. This is a big issue every year all around the country. Everybody's always asking, what do I need to do? We'll tell you today. You know, we've got a tough to control wheat of the week that you've probably seen around the farm. But first, here's this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk about soybeans in particular and their nodules. With legume plants, one of the great things about them is they can produce a lot of their own nitrogen. We're going to tell you how right now. Well, you may say, wait a second, plants always find their own food, don't they? And to some degree, that's true. When we look at plants out in nature, they're going to find whatever nutrients are in the soil as much as their root system can explore of the soil anyway. But when we look at a crop like soybeans, the seed that it produces, the soybeans themselves, are very high in protein. And when you're going to build protein, it takes a lot of nitrogen. So for plants to get nitrogen, like corn and wheat, for example, farmers will add nitrogen to the soil so the plants have plenty to produce the grain. With soybeans, most farmers don't have to because the soybeans have figured out a way to work with nature to create their own nitrogen. So what happens is there are bacteria in the soil called rhizobia bacteria, and they will feed off sugars that the plant produces. So plant roots, a lot of people think of plant roots as just being able to bring in water and nutrients. Well, they do a lot more than that. And one of the things they do is they can excrete or put out sugars that these bacteria will feed on. In exchange then, the bacteria take nitrogen out of the atmosphere, out of the air. Remember that there's a good portion of our air that we breathe every day, it contains nitrogen. So that bacteria can take that nitrogen just out of the air and convert it into a form that the plant can use for food. And the way this actually works is the bacteria will colonize on the roots and they'll make little colonies called nodules. So you'll actually see these little round, mostly white, type structures attached to the root system, inside that will be colonies of bacteria that are doing this work, taking the carbohydrates from the plant that the plant's giving out and bringing in the nitrogen that that plant needs. These colonies, it's pretty interesting. As the year goes on, when you split open one of those nodules, you'll likely see a pink to a beefsteak red color. When you see that kind of reddish color, you know that the bacteria is actively working and producing nitrogen for the plant. Later on in the season, when the soybean plant is making its seed, it's pulling a lot of that nitrogen in and it's not pushing out the carbohydrates anymore. And at that point, you'll see those nodules inside of them will turn to a green or a brown, and that will signify that colony is no longer working. So as the season goes on, you can see, all right, is this colony producing nitrogen for the plant or is it all done? One of the great things here is that farmers, like Darren said, don't typically have to add much nitrogen to soybeans because a lot of these rhizobia bacteria just live naturally in the soil. And the more soybeans you raise, the more often you raise soybeans, the more those bacteria are usually in the soil unless you get harsh conditions like flooding or you, your soil pH is way out of whack. I mean, ideally we're looking for somewhere around neutral pH, but if you add a four something pH or an eight something pH, you're gonna have bacteria starting to die off. Also in very dry drought conditions, then you might have bacteria dying. So even that said, even in great conditions, you're not gonna have ridiculously high rhizobia counts all the time. So what a lot of farmers will do is they will add rhizobia bacteria, living bacteria to the seed when they plant, they call that inoculation. So using a soybean inoculant allows the farmer to get more of the rhizobia bacteria on that seed and helping that plant produce nitrogen. Well, if everything goes well and there's plenty of rhizobia bacteria around soybean roots, the soybean plants are capable of producing about 70% of their nitrogen needs. As Brian said, under extreme conditions, it's going to be less. And in fields where 
soybeans haven't been planted for a long time or there, there have been these tough conditions, well, then they aren't going to quite be able to produce that 70%. So farmers will have to use some common sense and some judgment as to whether they need to add more of this bacteria to the soil, which most soybean farmers do, or if they need to add some more nitrogen to the soil as well to help do the work that these bacteria can. Well, once again, rhizobia bacteria are tremendously important to soybean production all around the world. They help the plant produce its own nitrogen. Well, it's too bad these bacteria can't take care of weeds as well in the field. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed later in the show. Your time is valuable. That's why you need a Hagee STS application system. Hagee STS products are designed for precision and efficiency, allowing you to make applications all season long with just one machine. Contact your Hagee rep today. Precision in grain moisture management can save you thousands in spoilage and elevator docks. The AgriDry Bullseye Controller monitors temperature and grain moisture and is available for all dryer makes and models. Plus, our AD Link feature gives you 24 7 remote monitoring and allows you to control your dryer wherever you are. Call us today for more information. Dry load store, 1 855 AgriDry. Dirty work pays. That is if your dirty work includes a Soil Max Gold Digger tile plow. Soil Max tile plows feature zero deflection technology. With the only tile plow factory paired with Ag Leader's IntelliSlope control system, you eliminate the need for grade calculations and lasers. So make your next investment in a Soil Max Gold Digger. Better yield, longer planting and harvest windows, better water management is all yours with Soil Max. Visit SoilMax.com. Farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know. I wish I could side dress more than just nitrogen. You can. While side dressing is efficient for nitrogen applications, you can also use that opportunity to apply PK and the micronutrients your crop needs. AgriLiquids Calibrate and MicroLink products allow you to nutritionally balance your side dress application efficiently and economically. Let agriculture liquid fertilizer help you make your next crop a bumper crop. For more info, visit agroliquid.com. Regalia RX Biofungicide activates a plant's natural defense system, limiting the effects of disease and improving overall plant health. Regalia RX complements your fungicide program to optimize yield and strengthen return on investment. Ask your retailer for Regalia RX today. Each year we get a lot of questions about side dressing corn. When should I do it? How much fertilizer should I use? Is it important to use anything other than nitrogen? So that's what we wanted to cover here today, talking about side dressing corn. All right, there's a couple different strategies. Well, there's lots more than a couple, but at least a couple primary strategies that many corn farmers will use across the country. And we'll see if you fall in one of these categories. Well, one strategy is I've got heavier soil. I'm gonna put it all out there up front, put all my fertility down before I plant, and then I'm gonna have enough to carry me through the season. So I don't have to worry about side dress or anything else. Well, that's one school of thought. Another school of thought is, you know, either I have light soil and my soil just can't hold all the nutrients I need for the year, so I know I'm gonna need multiple applications. Or even if I have heavy soils, I think multiple applications of fertilizer throughout the year will be better than throwing it all out at one time. If you're falling into this second school of thought, uh, you may have one reason or another why side dress is coming into play. Either it's a planned portion of what you're doing, or you say, I've got big yield potential. I probably need to put a little bit more out than what I did at planting time. Well, the other factor there, Darren, is how about Mother Nature? So if you get some big rains and you say, uh-oh, I think a lot of my nitrogen leached down, I'm going to need to add more nitrogen now, that's definitely something you need to take a look at. And don't just think it's nitrogen. It's also sulfur and boron, because when you get big rains and you have leaching, well, remember that not only is nitrate subject to leaching, but so is sulfate and so is boron. 
not maybe to the degree of nitrate, but nevertheless, maybe you should be adding some of those while you're adding your nitrogen. And in extremely light soils where you've got single digit cation exchange capacity, especially if you're down at two or three or something like that, you may have other nutrients that are leaching down and, and pushing way down into the soil as well. So it's really important to, to have a good soil testing program, and then to keep an eye on things as you go throughout the year and learn more about your soils. Pulse and plant tissue analysis is what we would suggest throughout the growing season, not just one time, but several times throughout the growing season, maybe each week for eight to 10 weeks, something like that. So you get an idea of the trends in your field. You can see, all right, after I have big rains, here's nutrients that come available for me and here's some that are getting flushed away. Yeah, but one of the problems that we have, whether it's in-season soil testing or in-season plant tissue sampling, is by the time you realize you've got a deficiency, you've already given up some yield. So yes, you can stop that yield loss at that point, but if you've already lost 20 bushels because of a deficiency for a week or two, well, you're never gonna gain that 10 or 20 bushels again. So then you have to be thinking about the next year's program and hey, I just don't wanna be short again. So for example, we farm in South Dakota, it's very dry, quite often it's very common to go four to eight weeks with zero rainfall in the summertime. So if we put our nitrogen on as a side dress and we don't do it before our last rain of the summer, then guess where that nitrogen sits? just sits in the soil and it doesn't get into the plant. That's obviously not what we want. So we've got to time it maybe a little bit earlier than somebody who has irrigation or somebody who gets regular rainfall. Well, that is true. There's a lot of planting that goes into side dress. The other thing that many farmers are going to be looking at, and you will as well, is the size of your corn plants and the size of that root system. Let's say that you're in 30 inch rows. Well, it takes a little bit of time for those roots to get out to the middle, but not as long as many would think. Oftentimes, by the time we have just a few inch tall corn plant, we've got roots that are a foot deep, a foot and a half deep in the soil, and they're starting to branch out to the side as well. The key thing here is we don't want to prune off too many roots. If you're going to be right up next to the corn plants, obviously you're going to cut a lot of roots off. So many times we're out in the middle, but the problem with being out in the middle is, well, now you're quite a ways away from the plant too. With a nutrient like nitrogen that can move with soil water, that's not such a big deal. But let's just say that you're putting phosphorus out there as well that doesn't move much in the soil. Now all of a sudden it, it is a little bit of a concern that, boy, I've got that a long ways away from the plant. Maybe there's a better way to do it. All that said, we do prefer to see nitrogen injected in the soil and really any nutrient injected in the soil to protect it, to protect it from volatilization, to protect it from sunlight decomposition, to protect it from erosion. There are just a lot of reasons why we would like to see your nutrients when we're talking about side dress injected into the ground. Whether you do that with cultivation or you just have a coulter out there, we don't care. But the point is we want it in the ground if at all possible. Whenever we're putting nutrients out in the field, we are very concerned about loss. So we like to protect nitrogen with nitrogen stabilizers. And there's three different types of loss, whether it's volatility to nitrogen laying on the soil surface and it's going to go up in the air, or leaching where it will wash down, or denitrification if we have waterlogged soils. So we like to use nitrogen stabilizers at this time to try and protect that nitrogen because the only reason we're putting it out there is we need it and we need it now. We can't afford to be losing that nitrogen economically or environmentally. We have to have it for our crop if we're going to make yield. And we'd much rather have you use less nitrogen with a stabilizer than just saying, well, I'm going to lose some anyway, so I'll just put some extra nitrogen on. That's not very environmentally responsible. And the big thing that I keep telling farmers is, hey, I'm a farmer too, and I don't want any more regulation on the farm, and I'm sure you don't either. So if we don't want any more regulation, then we've got to properly manage our nutrients. And let's face it, everybody's fighting us on this whole nitrogen thing. So I'd rather use less and then put it with a stabilizer and you'll get more effectiveness out of it. So the other question is simply, how much nitrogen can I put out? When we've got lower cation exchange capacity soils, we're going to need to split shot, and so we do need to put some out later. And what I mean, when we look at cation exchange capacity, it's a measure of the holding capacity of the soil. It's its ability to hold nutrients, to hold water, all those things. So cation exchange capacity is a great measure that you need to have on your soil test. And the way we convert this to nitrogen holding capacity, take 10 times the cation exchange capacity as the amount of pounds of nitrogen that soil can hold roughly at any one time. So let's just say your cation exchange capacity is 10, and let's say you're shooting for 200 bushel corn. You say, okay, I need roughly 200 pounds of nitrogen to be available throughout the season to get my 200 bushel corn. My cation exchange capacity is 10, so 10 times 10, well, we can have 100 pounds of nitrogen at any one time. So let's just say that you put 100 pounds out early and you need to put another 100 pounds out late. Well, when you get to side dress time, well, I look at my cation exchange capacity, again, I got 10, I can put 100 pounds out at one time, but 
we have to figure how much is still out there from the previous application. So you may have to make three applications in a real light soil, in a heavier soil with a higher cation exchange capacity, you may only have to make one or two. We've talked about nitrogen, sulfur, and boron, but take a look at all nutrients. It's possible that adding something else may help you on your farm. And the best way you're going to find this out is by doing some plant tissue analysis, but also some good soil testing ahead of season. And then finally, at least try some things in your farm. I mean, do some things that you might think, ah, oh, it's a little crazy. I don't know if, I, if phosphorus or potassium or some of these micros will really help me. Well, try some on a few acres and just see. I mean, that's probably the biggest piece of advice that I have for any farmer out there. Try some things on your farm and don't just try it one year. Try it over a two or three year period and let's see what kind of response we get. We really like taking at least two shots at meeting the nutrient needs of our plants. We also like taking at least two shots at tough weeds like our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? I wish I could apply all the PK and micronutrients this crop needs at planting. You can. When your soils are not excessively nutrient deficient, you can apply a whole season of PK and micronutrients when you plant and get top yields at harvest. AgroLiquid's exceptional nutrient compatibility and superior efficiency allows you to prescription apply everything your crop needs safely and conveniently. Research proves it. For more info, go to agroliquid.com. For lower cost, higher production, Mandaco Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Twister's ease of maintenance is forgiving in rocks and has contour conformity equaling zero downtime. Our hydraulically adjusted coulter angles make residue management easier, less costly, spring or fall. The Mandaco Twister vertical tillage unit is the new leader. See your Mandaco Agri dealer. Visit northcountrymarketing.biz or call. I've been involved in developing new technologies in agriculture for over three decades. The changing times demanded that we develop new and better equipment. Dry powder applications on seed can only be highly successful if they can be easily, effectively, and accurately applied to the target. That's where our company, Changing Times, and CT applicators come into the picture. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, soybean inoculants, or other dry products. Remember, CT applicators for the changing times. Some prefer to invest in fields halfway around the world, in short-term solutions to long-term challenges. At POET, we're investing in the fields we have right here at home, cultivating communities and growing the local economy, creating new local jobs while we create worldwide energy solutions, helping family farms grow even as they fuel the world, because we know that investing in a community can pay global dividends. See the world differently with Poet. Wake up. Breakfast is served. Your roots crave pee. Most of your applied pee gets tied up in the soil, a natural phenomenon known as phosphorus fixation. Fix the problem with a veil phosphorus fertilizer enhancer. A veil makes more pee available to your roots. Here, here, and here. Increasing pee availability can lead to increased pee uptake in the plant. That's more pee, more pee, and more pee. More phosphorus for your crop can mean more results in your bin. An average of 9.6 bushels per acre of corn. Breakfast is served. Supercharge your pee with a veil. How do I increase my protein levels in wheat? Hey, it's real simple. Have more nitrogen available later in the season. You do that, and you're going to have higher protein wheat. You know, there, there are a few other things, Brian, and I agree with you. We definitely well, that's, need that That's nitrogen. by far and away number one. So it, let's say on a scale of 1 to 100, um, and all the things are going to add up 100 to 100. Points total, if yes. there's 100 points total, I'd give the nitrogen thing 93 of them. So I'd, I'd give it 70. And the reason why I say <laughs> no. that is because we've got to have good plant health. You can't have bugs. You can't have disease. You've got to have a very healthy flag leaf, and you've got to have a healthy plant. See, I disagree with all that because even if you have, <laughs> well, seriously, because all we're talking about here is not yield. All we're talking about is protein. So if I have ample nitrogen in the soil. I don't care if I had all those things and my yield just went from 100 down to 30. If I have ample nitrogen at the end of the season, I'm going to have a higher protein level. Well, you certainly need the nitrogen. That is by far and away the number one factor. And so how do you get that? That's the question. All right. Well, I put a whole bunch on at planting time. How much of that will be left? You know what? Probably not enough. Well, tell me how much rain you're going to get during the growing season and tell me what well, your soil's okay. holding capacity even, is. Even with that, let's say, all right, I'm in a dry area and I don't have irrigation, I'm raising wheat, but I want to have higher protein levels. I've got heavy soil, I'm just going to put stuff out early. You know what? That's not necessarily going to get it done for you. For me, I like to put the nitrogen on a little bit later. And sure, you need a little bit to get things started in the spring, 
but I'm big on stream barring mid season and late season. That way we can kind of delay. Let's just put a little bit of nitrogen out there as we need it. So we don't get all this extra vegetative growth that we don't need. And we get more of that focus on the head. Then as we get later in the season, now we've got that one single stem, we've got a nice head on it. You can hit it with another stream bar application, get more nitrogen out there available, and wow, you're gonna have a good response on your protein. Okay, well let's say you don't wanna spend all kinds of money. How can long term you get this done without having to go out and spend 20, 30, $50 on nitrogen late season every single year? Well, one of the most important things is building up your soil's organic matter. So I realize this isn't a short term fix, but if you say, hey, over my farming career, I like to build the organic matters in my soil two to 3%, you absolutely can do that if you're dedicated to it. And then in the long term, and for your kids and grandkids, hopefully they won't have to add more nitrogen. They'll have nitrogen coming available for free to increase that protein late in the year for the wheat. One question we get quite often, Darren mentioned stream bars. People ask about foliar feeding. Can you put a whole bunch of nitrogen right over the top of the crop? You probably can. You're gonna wanna water it down, but you're gonna see a lot of leaf burn. So we're not real big on that, but there are people that do that to increase their protein levels real late in the season. We prefer stream barring, seeing that nitrogen get washed in with some rainfall and getting taken up by the plant. So we think that's a better way to do it. But if you want to, you certainly can try some foliar feeding on your farm. You certainly can improve the protein levels in your wheat by getting nitrogen availability late in the season through building up organic matter levels in your soil over time and also application of nitrogen late in the season. Well, one of the problems with putting more nitrogen on is you may see a few more weeds in your crop. We'll tell you how to stop them coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Farming isn't just in the land, it's in you. Take control of weeds like never before. Enlist builds on the Roundup Ready system, combining proven control of a new 2,4-D and glyphosate in Enlist Dual Herbicide. Protect what matters without changing the way you farm. Talk to your seed or crop protection supplier today. Volunteer Roundup Ready Canola. Doesn't sound like that should be a really big deal, right? But canola seed is so small. And as trains are heading down the rails and a little bit blows out, as birds carry some seeds here and there, volunteer canola can be a huge difference out in a field. If you've got it, it's a problem. You need to get it under control. All right, so in corn, our suggestion for you is start with one of the HPPDs and follow later possibly with one of the HPPDs. We're not real big on doubling up HPPD. So if you want to, you could start with maybe Verdict and then follow with Callisto, Laudus, Impact, Armazon, something like that. The key is to get the canola when it's small. In soybeans, we have got a great pre-program with either Authority MTZ or you could use Authority Assist. Now Authority Assist has that same chemistry as is found in Pursuit and Raptor. We'd prefer to save that for post-emerge because that does an excellent job post-emerge in volunteer canola as well. So start off with something like Authority MTZ that has Sencor and the Authority that are both effective on volunteer canola control. And then post-emerge, save that Pursuit and Raptor for that timing. And you could add some Flexstar to it as well for even more kick. In wheat, I'd start with Sharpen and then follow later with Husky. And you should have great control. That's all time for this week's wheat. And Iron Talk is coming up next. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you, and only you, to the information you need most from your equipment, from anywhere, at any time. AFS Connect, only from Case IH. Spray tank contamination has been a problem once again this year. We'll talk about it on today's Iron Talk. You didn't rinse out your spray tank and you switched from corn to beans and you dinged the beans up with some contamination in the tank that you didn't really even try to get out, it wouldn't be much of a surprise. However, when you actually double or triple rinse the tank out and use tank cleaner in the whole works, it simply makes you angry if it didn't work 100%. However, there's more to cleaning out a tank than just getting the gunk off the sides. 
one thing we're running into again this year, especially with the frequent showers that hit much of the upper Midwest through the month of May, is when a poly spray tank is left full overnight and potentially even for a few days. Sure, no one wants to get rained out and have to come back to finish spraying a field the next day or a couple days later. The problem is if you have a herbicide sitting in the tank for an extended period of time, products like Roundup, for example, can actually have the time to act like a very good tank cleaner. You see, poly tanks actually have pore space within the poly. Your normal tank cleanout procedures may not be doing an adequate job pulling past chemicals you've used out of those pores. The solution is twofold. First, after your initial flush is done, then use a tank cleaner. And when you're using that tank cleaner, fill the tank and charge the booms and let it sit overnight in your sprayer. Number two, try to never let your herbicides sit in your spray tank overnight. You don't have to get direct injection, but that would be another solution as well. So just be cautious and realistic. If you have to leave a product in the tank overnight, you may have some issues. So from here on out, get serious about cleaning out your spray tank, even the pores. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. Stop coring your bins with the AgriDry Gravity Grain Spreader. Traditional bin filling systems create uneven concentrations of grain and fine particulates. Uniform grain distribution allows even airflow throughout the entire bin, giving you more control over temperature and moisture content, increasing your grain quality and bottom line. Call us today for more information. Dry load store, one 855 dry with the success of the Case IH Tiger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us. But only Case IH offers a five axle design to give you a smoother ride, more power to the ground, with less berming and compaction. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, <laughs> we'd be blushing. Looking to maximize yield? Quick Roots from Monsanto BioEgg is a microbial seed inoculant that allows the plant root to explore a greater volume of soil. The key to higher yields. Quick Roots continues to generate yield response on corn, soybeans, wheat, and more, and is applied to the seed so the live microorganisms go right to work enhancing seedling vigor, increasing the uptake of certain nutrients including NPK, and expanding root volume. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Get Quick Roots today. Farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know. Being a farmer means securing your land and livelihood for the future. Harvest Solutions from Capello USA have the grit to get you there. Our product lines for corn, sunflowers, and forage are designed for efficiency and longevity, preventing harvest loss while minimizing maintenance and downtime. To do everything you can to advance your farmland to the next generation, call us at 855-CAPELLO or visit us at capellousa.com. Capello USA, Italian craftsmanship, American grit. Your time is valuable. That's why you need a Hagee STS application system. Hagee STS products are designed for precision and efficiency, allowing you to make applications all season long with just one machine. Contact your Hagee rep today. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. On your farm, you need speed and year-round effectiveness in your tillage program. The Quick Till from Norwood Sales allows you to move quickly through your fields, maximizing time and improving yield. Constructed of heavy duty materials, the Quick Till is ideal for both spring and fall applications, from preparing a healthy seed bed early in the season to breaking up corn residue after harvest. For more information about how a Quick Till can improve fields on your farm, call Norwood Sales today. That's all the time we have for today's show, but we invite you to tune in to the Ag PhD radio show each weekday from 2 to 3 p.m. Central. That's on Sirius XM Channel 80. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show where we'll have another Weed of the Week, Iron Talk, Farm Basics, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. Planting a crop not intended for harvest is becoming a regular thing. It's called a cover crop. 
The use of cover crops is on the rise due to the many benefits they provide the soil, including reducing erosion, improving nutrient availability, and breaking up soil compaction. To learn about cover crops, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.